get it, you and me. <laughs> um, uh, Ink105 says, since it's my birthday, gotta know what has been each of your guys' favorite movies on Best of the Worst. There have been so many. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was a lot easier when we didn't have as many episodes. Right, right. I mean, Miami Connection's still up there. Miami Connection, we've had some decent ones recently, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chopping Mall. I know you guys have seen it before, but I hadn't. Chopping, Chopping Mall. I hadn't great. seen it before. Well, I, you know what? I have vague recollections. Maybe I saw that when I was a kid. Sure. Or at least part of it. I really enjoyed Chopping Mall. I need Mall. to revisit, but I think Extro might be... My favorite that we've done, as far as, like, an actual movie goes. Right? Well, uh, see, I'm ruling out Extro and uh, Thunderpants. Oh, uh, you're ruling out <laughs> real movies? <laughs> yeah. Extro was a great experience for all of us, though, like, realizing that it was a real movie and it was a good movie. Yeah. That first scene where he's birthed out of oh, the... God. Oh, that was so fucking awesome. <laughs> that was a... That was maybe not my favorite bad movie but just one of my favorite times <laughs> yeah, just watch a movie like because that's what horror is all about is a big group of people going ah! yeah that visceral reaction yeah yeah that audience reaction i'm trying to think i'm trying to think of a, a legitimate one miami connection deadly prey deadly prey same episode right deadly prey the cameron mitchell uh, there ain't no music down there. Speech. Yeah, that's that's pretty high up there, as far as I'm concerned. That would probably be our Cameron Mitchell introduction, right? At least as far as best of the worst goes. At at that point, had we already seen Terror in Beverly Hills? No, it was Deadly Prey. I mean, we definitely hadn't seen it for the show. I'm trying to think if we watched Terror in Beverly Hills before I, we started Best of the Worst. I, I know we saw so. Hollywood Cop. I'm pretty sure we had seen Terror in Beverly Hills before the show had started. I th okay. We might have. I know we, well, we definitely seen Hollywood Cop. Mm -hmm. Or at least, have, you, have either of you seen Hollywood Cop yet? I haven't seen yes. Hollywood Cop. Yes. Okay, you've seen it. Um, and I, I remember, like, we all thought the police chief in that was hilarious, but I don't think I made the connection that it was the same guy at that point. I think it was later when I started to realize that all these weird performances was the same person. Sure, sure. Because there'd been so much time between watching each of them. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I think our first Cameron Mitchell on the show was was Deadly Prey. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I rewatched The Goonies over oh, the weekend. Yeah. My for some reason. Did you see The Goonies as a kid? Oh yeah, of course. Okay. I was going to say, anyone that watches Goonies for the first time as an adult hates it. Of course, <laughs> it is not. A you have great to have watched movie. it as a kid. I still think it holds up pretty well. Um, I, I, I think I'm kind of in the minority about, with that. I, I still like it quite a bit, but if I had not seen it as a kid, mm. I would not. I, I'd probably just be like, eh. I saw it as an adult and lost some love for it. Sure. I, I can understand that. My kids fucking loved it. Of course they did. Because they're kids. The I common mean, complaint about that movie is how annoying all the kids are. Like, they're constantly yelling over each other. And it's like, have you ever been around a group of kids? Like, that's how they are. That's exactly how they act. Chunk is particularly annoying, though. He's, and I, he's kind of annoying. And you know? I know he's the annoying character. It's pushing it, though. But he pushes it. Uh, but it's great to see him being tortured so much. Oh, they, like, put his hand in the blender. I, and... Talk about, you know, what? Talk about, we were talking about Babe. I want to talk about dark movies. The intro to that movie... <laughs> Is the bad guy in his prison cell looking like he hung himself? Yes. That's the first shot of the movie, <laughs> the kids' movie, The Goonies. Yeah. Is oh the, yeah, there's some there's some darker stuff in that movie. The bad guy has and then hung all the language, himself. lots of swearing. Lots of swearing. You watched it with your kids? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they loved it. That wasn't a problem. All the swearing. Oh, they've been cussing now. Oh, they've okay. been cussing now. So good for them. Basically, now it's just don't please don't do it at school. Yeah. Come on. But yeah, we we cuss now. We sh we share cusses. They tell me the the new ones they learned at school. Oh, that's good. Oh, oh yeah, crap. Yeah, that counts. All right. Crap's not a swear word. Uh, I want to say ass. Maybe they, they heard ass. Um, and Goonies is nothing but shits. It's Lots wall to shits. wall shit, shit, shit. I love that at the beginning during the car chase when uh, Chunk is is he in like an arcade or something? I just know he's got like a giant like milkshake or yeah. something. And the cars drive by, and he's pressed up against the glass, and he squishes the milkshake into the glass. He goes, <laughs> "Ah, shit!" <laughs> right, but it, like it, the movie is filled with such wonderful like kid logic. Oh yeah, well that's that's what makes it work. That's right. why I think a lot of people that watch it as adults 
like if you if you didn't grow up with that movie, mm-hmm. like you might not connect with it in that way. Right. But when you watch that as a kid, everything they do makes perfect sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> it makes perfect sense to you. But as an adult, there are so many logic holes that it's it's hard I mean, it's still cute. It's adorable, yeah. but it's hard to enjoy fully. Yeah. Because there are so many goddamn holes. But as a kid, oh my god, it was great. Um the 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 girls uh the you know the kids smooching old Josh Brolin, Josh Brolin. as the hunky older brother oh man <laughs> it's great you know what it was just great all the racist humor with the maid at the beginning oh my god Corey Feldman's telling him where which drawer to put which drugs in yep. so horrible <laughs> oh I mean just fucking data it, it, oh yeah short round the existence of that character jeez jeez it's a different Chris. time different time it was a different era. <laughs> I think it was a different era. What is wrong with Short Round? Huh? What is wrong with Short Round? Besides being an incredibly annoying character? Yes. Um, he's, he's an incredibly annoying character. The, the brilliant Asian inventor character that nobody can understand. Is being brilliant a negative Asian stereotype? <laughs> it's a stereotype. <laughs> it, it is. A ser- uh, how about at the... They're uh, implying that all Asians are intelligent. Still, <laughs> still stereotypes don't stereotype. have to be negative to, to be stereotypes. At, at the end, his dad has his own invention. Do you remember what it is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's the camera, Speaking right? of stereotypes, it's a camera that pops out because Asians take pictures. Data does have a really lovely line after that thing goes haywire, though. Yeah. And he's like, you can't hug a photograph. And yeah. you're like, aw. It's, no, it's all Goonies adorable. has heart. <laughs> it's all adorable. <laughs> it's lunk-headed, but it has heart. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh, now I want to watch Goonies. <laughs> the best. Have you ever watched the commentary track? Mm-mm. There's a commentary track on the. It was on the DVD, and now it's on the Blu-ray, mm-hmm. where it's all of them together. They're all grown up, and and it has like video of them all too. So it's Richard Donner and all the kids, and occasionally the video will pop up, and you see them all there, and it's like, oh, it's neat to see them all grown up. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey Feldman is constantly trying to make himself the center of attention. Oh, man. And then halfway through, without no explanation, Sean Astin is just gone. <laughs> he just vanishes. <laughs> I have no idea what happened to him. He had to go to New Zealand. He had to go make Lord of the Rings. Right? I w- I, yeah, I think the commentary was probably... No, that wouldn't have been pre-Lord of, Lord of the Rings. Right around the same era, I think, because I, th- I want to say the commentary now is like 10 years old or so. Oh, okay. Um. But yeah, he just vanishes, and then it's never mentioned why he's gone. He like just Corey could... Feldman, man, he's so annoying on well, that commentary. Man, maybe that's it. And I know, like, they're old friends or whatnot. And he's just like, Corey, I can't, I can't. <laughs> we're, if we're gonna remain friends, I need to leave. This I gotta commentary. leave this commentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Corey Feldman. How about that Don Rickles? Oh. R.I.P. I know. Gone too soon. Are people actually talking about a curse? No. This is ever. I'm just curious if this has ever happened. Jokingly, although since that video has gone up, I've seen a couple comments that are like, you know, it's just coincidence. Got like they're taking it seriously. They think we take it seriously. Yeah. 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 And you're like you realize this is a joke video, right? Because we make comedy videos. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like we also. That was, I, I so rarely comment on the the Red Letter Media Facebook page because I don't really pay attention. There's too many comments. You don't keep up. Mm-hmm. But there was one under the that video where a guy was like, "It's almost like people die, and occasionally there's coincidentally blah blah blah." And I just replied with like, "You must be a lot of fun at parties." <laughs> <laughs> All right. We happen to watch a lot of older movies whose actors are now very old. Yeah. Like, it's going to happen. Although, in the case of someone like Bill Paxton, like he wasn't that old. Right. He died of complications of surgery, so right. that one was a little bit of a Well, surprise, and Prince, too. That one and was, Prince, yeah. yeah. That was just an offhanded comment. Yeah. Right. Both were days after we mentioned them. It is kind of weird. Days. Yeah. So what I'm, we're saying is the video is serious. I'm just saying <laughs> it's a statistical anomaly and they happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Like, we could put up a montage of every other pop culture reference for whom those people are still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be, like, 99% of exactly. them. The non-curse of the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound as funny when you do that. <laughs> so, you know, we tried to make a funny video. So right. It's, like, it's like, like like Carrie Fisher, I was thinking. You know, like, why would we put... Some people mention, what about Carrie Fisher? Yeah. Well, she's not on Best of the Worst. We didn't mention the her The Christmas special. Worst. But it was like a year. She that died was a, a year later. A though, year yeah. and a half after we right. mentioned her. Yeah. You can't count that. Right. On a long enough timeline, everybody we mentioned on the show dies. Right, right. right. 
Well, we mentioned Carrie Fisher more recently in the Rogue One video about the CGI Carrie Fisher, but still, that's not... We're, the joke is that people we mentioned on Best of the Worst die. And she was not mentioned on Best of the Worst, right. uh, except for the holiday special. I'm still thinking there was a Zsa Zsa Gabor reference. I don't know when we would have mentioned her. Right? We have a Zsa Zsa Gabor like, beauty tip video, but I don't oh. think we've ever done it for the show. Okay. Did Florence Henderson die? Florence she Henderson died, right? Die, yeah. Before, well before, though, I think. Was that before we watched the, the beauty tip video? I think so. I don't remember. She died last year. Was it only last year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we would watch the video before, but still, that, we watched that video like two or three years ago at this okay. point. It's yeah. it, it's it's more interesting if it's like right after we do the episode that they die. Day, days or weeks. Yeah. Right. Right. Years don't count. How is Jay talking without moving his mouth? Uh, Jay. Uh, has been spending his days uh, taking ventriloqui ventriloquizy? Almost, Jack. Wow. Almost. Totally, <laughs> totally biffed that. <laughs> well, I got to start planning for my next career after Red Letter Media tanks. Right? Because you keep on, you, because uh, eventually you'll curse too many celebrities and no more movies <laughs> will be made. Ventriloquism. The Hollywood star whackers will come after me. Oh, no. Now you made me think of that sad man. <laughs> yeah, Randy Quaid, pretty sad. sad. Man. He's not even like like funny, crazy. Yeah, he's just kinda, it's just kind of sad and depressing. It is. That's how I feel about Corey Feldman too. I know, like, was that last year when Corey Feldman was on the Today Show and everyone was like thought it was hilarious? And I was like, mm. yeah, he's weird. I just feel bad for him. Yeah. And then they brought him on again. And it's like, no, this is just pathetic. Right. Like they're now they're milking milking it. it it's ha ha. Look at the crazy. Look at person. the yeah. yeah. Although that Ascension Millennium video, that's a work of work of art. Who, who dang, <laughs> who dang? I could watch that every day, all day. Yeah. Ascension Millennium. <laughs> oh man, I'm just remembering it now. The one shot, Sean Astin. Sean Astin's in it, yeah. The hat stuck on the string. <laughs> No, the string is stuck on the hat. Oh, is that the what hats it is? come down from the ceiling, which is stupid to begin with, and then everybody grabs their hat off. But one of them, like the string that was holding the hat up, stays stuck on the hat. So the entire <laughs> dance number, there's this string hanging off of it. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. It all works. Corey it all works. coming down the stairs and he can't get his tiny gloves on. Oh man. His angels. Oh God, yeah. One wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Let's see here. Tardcore says, Jay, you beautiful bastard. Have you seen The Void? And what are your thoughts if you have? <laughs> nope. I haven't seen it yet. That tip might have come in before you. That's, that's, that's why I heard the tips coming in. I was like, nope. someone's going to ask. No, I have not watched it yet. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, let's see here. J.R.R. Lovecraft. Which filmmaker who only does video game movies... Should I have less respect for <laughs> uh, Uwe Boll? Or... Uwe Boll. I don't even know what the other answer is, but it's got to be him. Yeah, it's got to be him. Who's the other one? Uh, Paul W.S. Anderson. Oh, Paul W.S. Anderson is a more talented filmmaker than Uwe Boll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely U Uwe Boll. I've never seen any of the Uwe Boll movies. <sighs> I don't. I, I don't get the appeal really outside of. House of the Dead is funny. Like, that one's really inept and actually funny bad. Mm -hmm. And the movie he did after that, Alone in the Dark, is kind of funny. And then everything else is just shit. And not even, like, funny or interesting bad shit. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, a horrible asshole. Like, I don't get the, the cult appeal of Uwe Boll. People for a while were calling him. I don't know if they still do, but, like, well, the modern-day Ed Wood. And it's like, no, Ed Wood's movies have charm. It's, I, don't know, I don't know how much of it is an appeal. It's a love-to-hate thing because they like the game series that he is effectively ruined on film sure and i well i can't speak for the games obviously but just as movies they're not most of them outside of house of the dead aren't amusingly bad mm. they're just sort of obnoxious and and terrible and he's annoying yeah but wasn't like, he on celebrity boxing not he wasn't on celebrity boxing but he was at some film festival where he challenged film critics okay. to <laughs> box him and i know people think that's funny but to me it's just like i don't know he just comes across like like an actual prick, like yeah. and is using people's hate to get more attention for himself. Mm -hmm. 
Well, maybe that's what people like about him. I we're, guess. We're, I, I don't find it interesting. He's consistently bad. Yeah. And so they're like, ah, you know what? No matter what, I can poke at Uwe Boll. Yeah. House of the Dead is pretty funny, though. That's the one movie that he did that is, is entertainingly bad. Okay. Well, there you go. His movies are a money laundering scheme, right? Maybe. They were for a while. I think that came out. It was like a some sort of like tax loophole with the German government or something like that. Oh. And that's how he was getting his movies financed for like a decade. Um, really? But now he's supposedly retired from acting. Or acting, from directing. <laughs> oh, God, I hope not acting. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's supposedly retiring from directing. <laughs> because his movies don't make any money. He did a Kickstarter for... He does a... I think it's a series of video games or a video game called Rampage. Is that what it's called? Rampage is the one with the giant monsters. Well, not that. Oh, what's that he called? He did Postal. Po he did Postal, but it's another one about like a guy that goes on a shooting spree. And it's more of like a dramatic movie. But it's I think the t at least the title is a video game. Someone in the chat can tell me. Hmm. Um, but he made like two of them. Mm -hmm. And he tried to do a Kickstarter for a third one. And it didn't, it didn't succeed because nobody cares. Right. And so he flipped out on YouTube where he's like, fuck everybody, fuck all you assholes, you don't appreciate my brilliance, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so no one wants to finance his movies now that he can't get this, like, tax loophole sure. business going. So. so therefore he's retired. He's quote-unquote retiring, right. which means he can't get money to make movies anymore. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, what's the name? I want to say the movie's called Rampage. Redneck Rampage? No, not Redneck Rampage. Oh, that's the only one I can think of. Let me see. Oh, they're saying Rampage, but it isn't about the game Rampage. Okay, yeah, it is Rampage. Okay. And there's like three of them. Okay, so it's just a coincidence that it's also named after a video game, but the video game has nothing to do with it. I guess, the yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember Rampage, the vi the like arcade game. Right. The big... I think they're turning that into a movie. I think I read that recently. I, I, but they're going to make a Rampage movie. Just, I'm just not surprised or shocked that anything. If you just make it a giant monster movie, that could be fun. That's potential, right? Yeah. But the thing about Rampage is they're also people. Remember, if you got, That's true. They if you got hurt too much, you got, tur you got turned into a person. Yeah. Which I ne never made any sense. But. <laughs> what, the monster turning into a person? Yeah. Well, the monster was a person in the first place. Oh, right, right. But, I, like, was there, was there a way to turn back into a monster? I'm trying to remember the, the, the gameplay of Rampage. I've, I barely Besides remember it. Besides jumping on a building and punching. Yeah, that's right. I just think your friend could grab you and eat you afterwards. Oh, that's right. That was fun. And you know what? That was fun. So then you're talking about making, like, a half werewolf, half giant monster rampage movie. Mm. And I would be absolutely okay with that. Sure. Black Phillip? <laughs> oh, no, 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 the ending. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Because I was, and you're like, you're ready for them to end it amb ambig ambiguously. Nope. Nope. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's the greatest. <laughs> go see, go see the Vovich. That's my only criticism for the Vovich is I just want to call it the Vovich. Yeah, everybody does. And you know, like I get, like it makes total sense that they wanted the logo to look like that, but it's just a little silly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely makes sense. Uh, Captain Blue 42 says, Hi, guys. Speaking of Noah, what's your favorite film adaptation that takes liberties in some ways from the source materials? Also, woohoo, Vavichi Vavoman. <laughs> <laughs> See how high she flies. <laughs> nice. Uh, the person that comes to mind is The Shining. Ooh, yeah, nice. Yeah, which I know Stephen King always poo pooed that Stanley Kubrick Shining, even though. He did his own adaptation, and it was the worst. Oh, if I could roll my eyes any harder. Yeah. How, how major do the departations have to be from the source material for it to count? Uh, I don't Shawshank? Know. Well, is Shawshank Redemption the written version? Is it a short story? Yes. Okay. I know in the end he doesn't get the warden's money, though. Okay. Mm. I've never read it. I don't know. Uh, the book. I haven't read it either. I just read, like, what, what's different? I was curious. Oh, uh, okay. The difference. He doesn't get the warden's money. He gets his own money that he had buried beforehand. Oh. So that's less satisfying. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I'd say that counts as a little. That definitely okay. counts. Yeah. Sure. That changes the story. It's, a, it's fairly minor. Yeah. Fairly minor, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that counts. I'm trying to think of someone who's done it right. 
someone who's done it right. I'm trying to think of like superhero movies because that's usually my. <laughs> like, you know, remember when Spider Man, the goo came out of his real wrists and not web shooters? <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> that was so dumb. That's so unbelievable. Right? <laughs> In the world of. Uh, a teenager getting bit by a radioactive spider and then developing spider powers. Yes. I'm on board for that. The fact that it came out of his wrist always bothered me. Okay. Always, always. It made Peter Parker creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It did. It did. He's got weird wrist things now. And he right? uses fluid. And... I can never wear <laughs> short sleeves. <laughs> like, that's his life now. It, it hurts the relatability okay. of Peter Parker. Oh, yeah, and then especially, like, when you get into Spider-Man 2, and it just turns into that whole, like, my powers aren't working because I'm sad. Yeah. It's, like, eh. <laughs> it's a metaphor for impotence, Jack. Right. Right. Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> or it's, like, in, in the comics, what it would be is he's just, uh, he's spending too much time being Spider-Man, so he can't earn enough money to make the web fluid and it's like oh that's relatable mm. like he needs to i need to find a job so i can earn money to be oh, a superhero sure. okay you know. <laughs> have you do have you as you no doubt have noticed i am a child <laughs> <laughs> what else? shit shit dog Let's see here. Hi, guys. Uh, Jay, I was going to ask you if you'd seen The Void. <laughs> Good looking out early in the stream. Here's money for being so courteous. <laughs> Johnson, 89. <laughs> I knew it was going to come up. That's this year's The Witch. There you go. Except for it might not have as happy an ending. Because after you saw The Witch, you loved it. I did love The Witch. And they knew I kind of knew it. I was going to love that. Oh, yeah. Have they made anything before that, the filmmakers? No, that's his first movie. Shut the Something fuck. that, like, sure-handed and amazing and so much attention to detail, and it's his first feature. So confident. Yeah. The Witch. I'm a little disappointed because this next movie is supposedly a uh, a remake of Nosferatu. I'm oh. just like, eh. But I did hear an interview with him, or I read an interview with him, where he's like, I know, I know, like, that's, uh, like, first-time filmmaker, and then his second movie is, like, a remake. Yep, like, I yep. understand. <laughs> I have other things that I'm working on. This is just the first one that has kind of come yeah. together. So it's like, all right, fair all right. enough. At least he understands that it's mm -hmm. kind of lame. Yeah. I know Nosferatu's a weird one to remake for me. I know they've done it a few times. Like, Werner Herzog did one in the 70s. Because mm -hmm. all Nosferatu is is an adaptation of Dracula. Right. It's right. just the only difference is the look of the vampire. Mm -hmm. That's what Nosferatu is. He's got the long fingernails and the pointy ears or whatever. Oh, and the, the big nose and the teeth. Yeah, and yeah. The, yeah, yeah. But it's just the story of Dracula. <laughs> the only difference is the look of the of the, the vampire. Well, the, no, then I'm glad. Like, he, he can do it some... He can give it the atmosphere. I'm, I'm sure it'll be great. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine that guy fucking up horribly on his second movie. That first one is so great. It's... It's just too good. <laughs> All like the, the 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 casting. We've already talked about that a little bit, but fucking everybody. That creepy ass mom. Yeah. Everybody looks kind of funny. Well, they look appropriate for that era. Like right. you see a lot of period movies where they just look like modern actors. Yeah. You know? Everybody looks right. Everybody looks a little bit off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. There's a. a uh, an extra on the Blu-ray for it mm -hmm. that's just these, like... I can't remember where they're from. I haven't watched the whole thing yet. But it's, like, professors at some school. It might be in, like, Salem or something. Um, just gushing over the attention to detail and accuracy of all the period aspects to it. Sure, sure. And they're like, everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. <laughs> all the details are completely accurate. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I believe that. And, and just... How often they utilize that that trick of uh, of changing scenes on a harsh sound? Edit. Yeah, oh, it's it, so effective. It's always so effective. Always so effective. Yeah, like one of the earlier ones, uh, uh, Tom. I can never go. Thomason. Thomason. It's a very strange name for a little girl. Thomason is playing peekaboo with a little baby, oh, and yeah. it cuts on one of the boo. Yeah. And it, it it's jarring and unnerving. <laughs> it's great. 
just a little bit off. Have you seen the uh, the trailer re-edit that makes it look makes it uh, into a Wes Anderson movie? <laughs> No. It is so cleverly edited. You have to watch it at some point. It's really good. It's really well done. Or it makes it look like a quirky yeah, Wes yeah. Anderson comedy. Of course. <laughs> of course. What? Great. Let's see here. Uh, Tiberius Kirk says, after Friday stream, we watched Innocent Blood. Oh, I haven't seen that in forever. I love that movie. A mob vampire dark comedy from John Landis. John Landis' only other horror movie. With Don Rickles. Yeah, Don Rickles like melts or explodes <laughs> or something in that because he turns into a vampire. That and sounds great. I, I, uh, I have not watched that since I was probably a teenager. Mm -hmm. I should rewatch it. Did you say you like it, Rich? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like Innocent Blood. Yeah? I have not seen it in so long. I don't remember. I remember the, the, the main females naked a lot. Okay. Um... Sounds and great. And Robert Loge is in it, and Don Rickles is in it. it sounds great. And there's lots of cameos because it's John Landis movie, so there's lots of director cameos. Like I know Sam Raimi shows up at one point as like a <laughs> like a butcher or something. Sure. Well, that's good. That sounds great. That sounds great, Kirk. Uh, Ricketts forty seven says, "I love the sneering contempt you guys have for your fans." <laughs> talk about how great you guys are all the time it's true. <laughs> we we have sneering contempt because we expect so much of you that's I have, it i have sneering contempt from the dumb ones <laughs> <laughs> you're not all the same you know you like... don't just pander to everybody unfortunately the dumb ones seem to be the most vocal well that's the case with anything on the internet everywhere Ex exactly <laughs> Exactly. I have a terrible opinion, and everybody needs to know it. Boop -a -doop. I have a terrible opinion and a keyboard. No, it's I have power. You have a terrible opinion. That's true. And everyone needs to know it. Everyone needs to know that I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I could just stop watching your videos, but I must continue. <laughs> How am I going to complain if I don't keep watching? I will watch every single one of your videos because I hate them all so much. So I will make sure to watch them all and tell you why I hate each individual one. I will In take notes. Excruciating detail. Yes. yes. Excruciating detail. Oh, is this another live stream where Jack's there? <laughs> like all of the live streams? He did it again. every day. Every day. There's this one guy on our YouTube. Why don't you just mute him? Huh? Oh, because I don't care. Uh, okay. He's not saying anything offensive. So it's like, ah, fine. You want to, like, every... Okay. And he's watching them all. He watches every single... Well, great. if he doesn't watch them all, how can he complain? Exactly. How can he continue to complain? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anonymous says, I actually fucking love Langoliers. Back in our really? Greenies talk. But that's besides the point. Bronson Pinchot was in that. B Balky? Balky. Balky's in that. I think yeah. he's the villain. I haven't seen him forever. <laughs> Did you hear they might be rebooting Tron? Like, like Rebooting? Yeah, as in not a follow-up to the last one, because the last one didn't do very well. It's, oh, that's neat. It's too cold to wear, though. I will freeze, the character will freeze to death. Sure, but that you know what? That looks cool. I like it. Thank you for putting it on for me. No problem. No problem. Oh, you still have the pants on. Oh, no, you change your pants. Uh, anyway, uh, I watched The Discovery. Wait, that's besides the point. Watched The Discovery on Netflix. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Scientist proves there's an afterlife and people keep killing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of great. <laughs> it's perfectly is logical. Is this a movie or a series? That's the premise. Is... If they're scientifically proven to be an afterlife, so everyone just kills himself, that's kind of great. That is kind of great. Not perfect, but worth the view. Thanks, Anonymous. Let me I'm gonna look the this discovery. up. The discovery. The <laughs> discovery. I like that premise. That's that sounds wonderful. Yeah, that's fun. There's so many different like tones you could go with. So mm -hmm. I'm curious what it is, but 
I think Jared Leto is in talks for Tron. That's that's what I had read. Yeah, a Tron oh. reboot starring Jared Leto. Oh no! He Just make a follow up to the last one. Yeah, the last one was fine. It didn't do great. Like I think it did okay box office wise. Then why, then why it wasn't reboot a, it at all? It wasn't a huge hit. Well, then, that's the thing is like the first movie was a flop. Mm -hmm. The second one did not do great. Mm -hmm. Why can't just just leave it alone? Or if the second one did okay-ish, then make a follow-up to that. I would like to see a follow-up to that. I like that Tron movie. Yeah, it was Tron fine. Legacy. It was fine. It's it's got some pacing issues, but I love the look. I love mm -hmm. the world. I love the music, of course. The Daft Punk stuff. Oh yeah, it's Jeff, a great song. Jeff Bridges' son is not as interesting a main character that's, as Jeff Bridges. That's the biggest flaw with the movie. Is and the problem is just yeah, any follow-up to that won't have Jeff Bridges. Right. Most likely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a problem. But I think there's still, like... I mean, like you can find I, some way to bring them back. And, and yeah, I guess. revolve around that, but... But still, I think the world is strong. Mm. I, I liked... Uh, what's her face? Olivia Wilde, I thought was good mm. in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more to do with that world, so... I don't know. As long as you get that Daft Punk back, that's all that matters. All right. It would not be the well, same. Well, if you were to reboot, you feel like can't... Would it be weird if you brought Daft Punk back? No, they, just, they just do the soundtrack. Yeah. All right. All right. and, and you know what? I think it would be weird if they didn't. It'll be a reboot. Then I'd be like, where's the awesome music? It'll be a reboot, but it will look exactly the same. Guarantee. Yeah. Guarantee. They just they just want that name. They just yeah. need a name that people recognize. They don't care. But it's about not even a popular else. name. They had a cartoon series that I think only lasted like a season. They had a cartoon series? Yeah, I never saw it. Yeah, it was called like Tron. Uh, uh, what was it called? <laughs> it looked kind of neat. Like the visual style of mm -hmm. the animation looked cool. I never watched it. I think that it came out. I think it came out right around the same time as Tron Legacy because they were hoping that would be like a new big franchise. Sure. And then it just wasn't. Ugh, Jared Leto. Yeah. Ew. Ew. Eh. Ew. What you got against him? I, I don't like the movies. He's, I don't like He's the, the way worst he, Joker fight, ever. For one I don't thing. like the way he fight acts club? in movies. Uh, fight Club. Well, he spends ninety percent of it with his face beaten. Up. <laughs> He's barely a part of Fight Club. I know. I know. I'm just pointing out that he's in it. All right? <laughs> he's yes. in uh, uh, the other Fincher movie, the uh, um, Panic Room. He's got, like, cornrows. Do you remember that? Oh, my God. That was him? Yeah, that's Jared Leto. It was him and Dwight Yoakam and right. Forrest Whitaker. Good old Jodie Foster. I like that movie. I know a lot of people are like, yes, yeah, that's, that's one of David Fincher's worst. I think it's pretty good. I just thought it was kind of bland. Like... It's well, well, it's, it's it's such a simple little story. It's like a B movie almost, mm. but I like Jodie Foster in it. I like, um, I like Forrest Whitaker in it a lot. Mm -hmm. Suffers from some dated CGI, because that's David Fincher. That was his period where he's doing all the swooping through, like the camera's oh, gonna go through the handle shoot. of the coffee pot, yeah. <laughs> that type of shit. <laughs> and it just looks like that's... like shiny uh, video game yeah. graphics. <laughs> Ease up, David Fincher. You're brilliant. You don't need to do this stuff. <laughs> but it looks so cool. But I can do it. The camera will start in an exterior shot. It'll go through the window, which is always super impressive. People love that. <laughs> then it'll go down the stairs through a door. The only way those type of shots are impressive if it's all practical, if it's all in camera, and you mm. do some sort of crazy, like, you know, elaborate camera move, then you're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's neat. But when, like, all the elements that you're traveling through are CG. Is that yeah. just because you're a filmmaker, though? Does yes. the normal audience give a fuck? No. I'm, I'm speaking specifically from my okay. point of view. I, here's uh, my, my defense of the regular viewer enjoying that kind of stuff. Is if you look at something like the pacing in Children of Men. Yeah. And Children of Men is filled with That's all of these of super long one-take uh, or one-shot. One-shots, yeah. Yeah. These basically entire scenes that are one shot. Yeah. And it can affect the pacing. It makes like it makes the scene have far more tension to it when there's no yeah. edit point. I think a general audience, yeah, they might not notice specifically that it's all one take, but yeah. subconsciously they can tell. Exactly. It's very I need to rewatch Children of Men. Fucking fucking Clive Owen is the greatest. <laughs> Julianne Moore. Yeah. I've Children only seen it once. Men. Really? I've only seen that movie once. Oh, I own shit. it. I've never bothered to rewatch it though. I need to. Shit. I, I I think there was a period where Lisa and I were watching that at least once a week. Just, <laughs> oh really? Just because it's so fucking good. Yeah, that's good.
Jay, have you re refnend Neon Demon yet? Refn are they trying to make a joke based on Nicholas wanting Refn's name? Oh, maybe. Yeah. No, I love Neon Demon. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing it. That's next on my list. That's one I think. I, I, I thought you there was a possibility you might find The Witch boring. I think you may find Neon Demon really boring. It's it's very possible. <laughs> it's very possible. I know I've just I've wanted to see it. I, I really enjoyed Driver. Drive. Drive. Yeah. Not to be confused with Baby Driver. I keep getting Baby Driver confused with Boss Baby. <laughs> I kept doing that. I'd hear the two titles, and I didn't remember which movie it was. <laughs> but, it's like, oh, Baby Driver's going to be the good one. That's right. Right. But, like, it's it's about, like, a, a silent badass who's really good at driving who meets a waitress in a diner and f for his last big... J like, the setup seems... Un unusually similar eh. to drive I, it's edgar wright i have no doubt it'll be its own thing uh, of course throw my hands watch, the, watch the uh there's a u.s trailer and then there's like a i don't know if it's uk or whatever like an international trailer okay if you haven't seen the international trailer make sure you watch that okay it's so much better than the u.s trailer maybe that's it it gives it shows that the movie has a lot more personality than the u.s trailer shows oh okay i i'm not worried and i was gonna see it and most likely enjoy it because it's edgar wright right but I, I watched that trailer, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> a silent and mildly autistic <laughs> hero who drives a car very well, who meets a waitress in a diner and has a relationship with her now. <laughs> ah. But no, I'm, I'm looking forward to Neon Demon. Uh, unfortunately, that's another one where I need to start it or watch it without Lisa, because I guarantee she will not want to watch it. Probably. But, like, I really want to see it, so it's, it's got to be one of those that I sneak in. <laughs> oh, bother, you are doing a beer brewing stream? Oh. How is that even going to work? Wouldn't that be horribly boring? You're just going to mix all the ingredients and then just have the camera it sit just on sits the... It just there. <laughs> ah, so what's in the news today? <laughs> You can t describe what you're doing with the sure. ingredients, and then while you're waiting, you can talk about something else. Okay. Let me know, Obother, when you do that. Let me know when you do that. I'm, I'm going to give Obother some credit. Yeah. Unlike you. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. No, that's absolutely fair. It's absolutely fair. Would anyone like a beverage? Oh, no, thank you. No? Okay. Did, did talking about beer, no, I want a beer. Tr trigger, trigger your beer response? <laughs> Obviously, I'm just having some fun with Obother because I'm sure I'm sure brewing your own beer takes a lot more than just chucking some shit into a tube and then waiting for three days. How how, how ignorant, Jack! How how horribly how horribly horribly ignorant. ignorant! Yeah, I am shocked, shocked at my ignorance at your ignorance. I am not the astounding level the, of your ignorance. The fact that you are shocked has me shocked. You should know me better than that, Rich. The fact that I am ignorant of your ignorance is ignorant. <laughs> we've gone, we've gone we've too far. We've gone, we might have gone too far in a few places. 